Okay, guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about a weighted Nash bargaining rule. Uh, this is a highly used uh, bargaining rule in uh, economic theory or in economic modeling. Um, and here is why. Well, let's suppose uh, you are modeling a strategic environment where you know that negotiators do not have equal bargaining power, right? Um, I mean, this is usually the case. Uh, for example, if it is a wage negotiation and on the one side there is a male uh, or, or, or a man and on the other side of the negotiation table there's a woman and if it is a wage negotiation, so statistically speaking, we know that women are, are kind of uh, less bargaining power, statistically speaking, uh, in, in wage negotiations. And so if you want to model uh, you know, that sort of strategic environment and to provide some uh, policy implications like what we should do to eliminate those bargaining power uh, inequalities, uh, well, then you have to build a model and choose a, a rule which is not going to treat players uh, uh, symmetrically, even though the game is symmetric. All right, we know that the Nash uh, bargaining rule is a symmetric rule. It treats players symmetrically if the bargaining game is symmetric. But what if the rule that is applied in reality is not symmetric? Or alternatively, think of situation where you would like to um, uh, sort of positively discriminate one party or one negotiator over others and so uh, you would like to give him or her a more bargaining power and then calculate how to distribute the surplus. Okay, so in that sense for, or for that reason using Nash bargaining rule is not really the best option. So it is called P-weighted or just weighted Nash bargaining rule. So uh, P is the weight. It's basically a probability uh, vector. So P1, P2, all the way up to Pn. Each of those numbers are coming from 0, 1 interval. So they can't be less than 0. They can't be more than 1. And more uh, importantly, uh, when we add them up, they must add up to 1 so that this P is actually a probability distribution over the players. All right, so each PI is actually interpreted as uh, the negotiator I's bargaining power. So the higher, for example, if PI is equal to one, I mean, for example, P1 is equal to one and all the other PIs are zero, that means the other bargainers uh, have no bargaining power at all. We only care about player or negotiator one. If, for example, PI, I mean, all the players, all the negotiators have exactly the same PI, meaning PI equals PJ for every IJ. Well, this is standard Nash bargaining uh, rule, okay? But here, PI can be anything, again, as long as it satisfies this. Now, the weighted Nash bargaining rule is defined by uh, exactly the same way of Nash bargaining rule. The only difference is that uh, in this multiplication, we do have xi minus di to the power pi, okay? And then we multiply everything. And then we maximize this uh, multiplication over all individual irrational and feasible payoffs in the bargaining problem SD. And then the uh, solution is basically the one that maximizes this multiplication. Uh, as you may predict, uh, the weighted Nash bargaining rule satisfies proto-optimality, all right? It's always going to give us some point on the boundary. It satisfies scale invariance, so it really doesn't matter whether the utilities of the players... So don't forget, uh, whether players are risk-neutral or risk-averse, it will change the prediction or the outcome or the solution. However, uh, when we say the agents are risk neutral, whether you write the utility u of y is equal to y or u of y equals 2y, that doesn't matter, or 2y plus 5. Okay, that doesn't matter. So, uh, but obviously, if u of y is equal to y to the power 1 health, that is going to make huge difference because this is not positive affine transformation of, uh, of this utility function. Okay, so... 
it satisfies uh, scale invariance, which is an important assumption. I mean, it's an important property because it really doesn't matter whether players are multiplying each, uh, you know, surplus by two or five or ten. Um, so scale invariance is an important property. The other one is IIA, so independence of irrelevant alternatives. So uh, the irrelevant alternatives are not going to uh, make any difference. Um, but obviously it's not symmetric, okay? And the reason is, well, it's not symmetric uh, as long as PI equals PJ doesn't hold, okay? Um, so that, that makes perfect sense because the symmetry of the rule is broken by introducing this concept of bargaining power. And that was the entire purpose of introducing this uh, Nash bargaining rule. Okay.